Hey guys, and thank you for joining me for another end of year roundup where I decide to um, have a little show and tell and talk about uh, what's been going on and show off some, uh, some really nice, lovely Christmas presents that I received this year or last year. So first things first, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays, and a safe and healthy New Year to everyone. I truly, truly wish that 2021 brings us nothing but happiness, um, or as much as is possible. Um, I've been sort of slow the past couple of months with uploads, uh, because Christmas um, is the busy season for a lot of jobs, including mine, so I've been flat out, um, normally I only work four days, so I have sort of a three-day weekend, but for the past, since like October, worked five days a week, and, um, didn't really have the energy to, to work on videos, um, and, since like all my filming stuff is at a different location to where I work, um, I couldn't really do stuff during the week when I had energy. But that's all done now. I would like to say that I'll be back on schedule, but I feel like I say that every time I make a video. So we're just going to um, do our best because that's all we can do to keep making videos. But that's basically all I wanted to say, catch up on that, everything's been good, I'm really good, I hope you guys are really good, um, let's get on to some Christmas presents, shall we? So, if you, uh, follow my sort of gaming videos, or know me in real life, you know that I, a lot of the time, go by the moniker, um, McFly, on, uh, social media, some social media, um, gaming platforms, and uh, while I was shopping around for Christmas gifts for my family a couple of weeks ago, I found that Michael J. Fox, Marty McFly himself, uh, has written some memoirs. Or at least uh, had some memoirs for him written. And this is his new memoir, uh, No Time Like the Future. It goes into... Um, Stories about illness and health, aging, strength of family and friends, and how our perceptions about time affect the way we approach mortality. And um, it's like a, an optimist considers mortality. And I myself have a lot of thoughts about mortality and um, the meaning of life and the bigger picture, the grand scheme. And I really like... Uh, Michael J. Fox, so I'm very keen to read that. I don't read a lot of sort of autobiographical works, um, but I'm very excited to to read this, read some non-fiction. It's been a while since I've read a complete book, um, and I think that's going to be a really nice one. So a lot of these gifts I sort of picked out myself and then gave to other people to give to me because we've had some like family stuff going on so we haven't had a lot of time um, but I still got like some really nice things and it's like the thought that counts and that kind of thing so um, I really like that book um, next I got these really cool pins they're called fig pins and I'd never heard of them before um, before I was doing my Christmas shopping, it's, um, like a pop culture icon, if you want to call them that, they've made into a very sort of hefty, uh, pin, they had a bunch of Spider-Man ones, a bunch of Dragon Ball ones, and surprisingly, they had a Venom one, which I think is awesome because Venom gets like no representation. And, um, you know, they come in their own little display cases. 
So I got Venom and Kid Boo, who is probably my favorite um, Dragon Ball Z villain. And they had like a specific Dragon Ball Fighters uh, range. And some of the some of the artwork on them is just incredible. Um, so yeah, I just picked up these two because while I like having cool collectible things, I don't like going mad about them and ending up with a bunch of collectibles sitting around everywhere because I've got a whole shelf over there that I'll have to show you guys one time of all my collectibles. But yeah, I thought they were really sick. And the display cases I love because I love little display case things. And I think they're just going to look awesome like sitting above, sitting on my shelf like that. So yeah, they had like heaps of Dragon Ball characters, Spider-Man. I got my girlfriend, um, Spider-Gwen, because she likes her. And I got my friend from work, um, Ultra Instinct, Goku, doing like a Kamehameha. Um, and I, yeah, I just thought they were really cool. Little, neat little gifts. Um, next up, this was a gift from my housemates. This was their main gift to me. They always spoil me with like a little sack full of treats and stuff, but... Their main gift this year was a pair of cat socks and I was like they always give me cat stuff because uh, of like an inside joke and I was like ah oh, yeah very nice cat socks like to be expected and then they were like take a closer look at the cat's face so I did and um, I was like is that my cat and they were like yep <laughs> so they got these custom socks made with my cat's face printed on them. My silly gorgeous cat. He's big doofus face. <laughs> um, yeah, they're really cool. <laughs> the socks are a little weird, like, they don't sort of bend like a sock does and the heel doesn't sort of stick out. It's kind of just a different colour. And I did try one on... Um, but it stretches the face a lot. Like, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm not too keen to actually wear them because I feel like I'll wreck them and like I feel like washing them will wreck them as well. But I will, I will treasure them always because they have my cat. <laughs> Mr. Pud. So yeah, I thought that was really cool and very surprising. I was like, oh my god, like... Who thinks of printing someone's pet's face on socks? It's ridiculous. But yeah, I was really happy with them. They were really cool. Uh, another thing I got, which um, no one else will ever be excited about this except for me, I got a Pelican SD card case holder. Uh, because I have a buttload of SD cards now and micro SD cards, and I ordered like this very nice sturdy case for them. Pelican cases, you're supposed to be able to like run over in a car, um, and everything's fine. I'm obviously not going to test that, but yeah, definitely an old man when you're excited about storage gifts for Christmas, and not like guns and toys and stuff like that. Um, next, I got this. Very nice album, which is the Arctic Monkeys live at the Royal Albert Hall. Um, so I really like Arctic Monkeys, and I wasn't super big on their latest album, but this one they do a lot of their old classics, um, and I, I haven't listened to this yet. As you can tell, the crinkly plastic's still on. But they do um, a bunch of songs from like AM that I like and from like, I want to say Suck It and See, but I think it's different albums. So I've got 4 out of 5, Brian Storm, Crying Lightning, Do I Want to Know, Why Do You Only Call Me When You're High, 5 out of 5, One Point Perspective, Do Me a Favor, Cornerstone, Knee Socks, Arabella, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, she looks like fun, from the Ritz to the rubble, pretty visitors. Don't sit down because I've moved your chair. I bet you look good on the dance floor. <clears throat> and then I 
guess there's a second disc where they have three songs on it. Star Treatment, The View from the Afternoon, and Are You Mine? So, a fair few songs from AM there, which is my favourite album by them. Um, but I bet, I bet it sounds amazing live, because I've seen a bunch of their live performances, um, like on YouTube and stuff. And uh, I can almost imagine just the, the acoustics in the Royal Albert Hall. I bet it sounds beautiful. So yeah, that was a really nice CD. Next, I got a couple of games. Um, I got The Last of Us Part 2, um, which went on a huge sale right before Christmas. Um, from like 80 down to 30 bucks or something. And I don't really buy a whole lot of physical games anymore um, because I don't <laughs> tend to have time to play them. But um, I do like collecting complete series and I've got Last of Us Remastered over there, which I really have to play again because it's been a few years since I finished The Last of Us and I haven't actually played part two yet. I've had it all spoiled for me and stuff, but I haven't played it myself, so that'll be fun. And of course I had to get um, Crash Bandicoot 4. I still haven't finished three in the trilogy yet. I've been um, trying to platinum one, two, and three, and I've platinumed one twice. I'm working on the Platinum for 2, and I haven't started on 3 at all. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get 4, because I know that I'll definitely play this at some point, because Crash is timeless. Um, I used to get tons of games for Christmas, and then recent years I've just been like, I really don't want to keep filling up my shelves with games, because especially because after a while I just like have an existential crisis and just cull a lot of them. So all of those like game collection videos that I've done over the past couple of years... Um, my collections are probably completely different by now. Not like the retro ones, but like PS3 and Xbox and PS4 and stuff. Um, yeah, probably completely different. But now, um, when I like know for sure that I'm not going to trade in a game like Last of Us Part 2 and Crash, I, I usually hold on to those and get them. So that'll be cool. Um, actually now I really just really want to play Crash Bandicoot, to be honest. <laughs> But yeah, so, um, next I got a buttload of movies. I, um, don't know if I've ever talked about this before. Obviously you guys know that I love movies, and particularly horror movies, because I had a series, um, dedicated to just discussing horror movies, but I actually do have, like, a rather modest sort of movie collection in this shelf over here off screen and for Christmas I added to it so I got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre the original 1976 or 1984 or something I didn't know the movie and then as soon as I have to say it I forget it anyway it's the original one um, disc special edition that has special features and deleted scenes and outtakes, a documentary, interviews, all that good stuff. And um, I'd never actually seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or any of them for that matter. But I watched this last night and I um, actually really liked it. I was telling my friends about it and I was like, Movies these days um, are constantly just trying to up the ante, trying to be as gruesome as they can, um, just for that shock factor. Like, they'll show you, like, cutting through people with chainsaws and all that kind of thing. Um, but movies, like, in these days, in the, um, the days of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween and all that kind of thing, they were a lot more subtle. And I've sort of started appreciating that more. Um, I did watch Halloween recently the original and I wasn't big on that one but this one I kind of liked um the characters were pretty interesting and I don't really know why it's called the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because if you've seen this movie you know that only one person actually dies on screen from the chainsaw everyone else gets bonked 
gets uh, bonked on the head with a mallet. And then a couple of characters die off screen, I think. Um, but no, I thought it was great. I thought it was really good. And um, yeah, it wasn't gratuitous. It didn't get too like um, overtly sexual like a lot of slasher movies do. Was it like a must watch? Probably not. If you have an appreciation for horror movies um, and like the characters, like um, horror icons like Bubba or Leatherface and um, you know Mark Myers, I think yeah, that's worth a watch. It, it definitely made me want to watch all the um, the remakes and the sequels and all that kind of thing, even though they'll be a lot different because they're more modern. I also got um, the Resident Evil Blu-ray movie collection, nine movie collection, with Resident Evil, which is a very solid zombie horror film. I, I was genuinely scared and upset at some of the parts in that movie. And then the rest are more action than horror, so... Resident Evil Apocalypse, Resident Evil Extinction, Resident Evil Afterlife, Resident Evil Retribution, Resident Evil The Final Chapter. Each one gets more ridiculous as it goes along. There's a lot of cloning and ridiculous stuff. Um, but the original is pretty solid. Not super faithful to the games, I don't think. Um, but they do bring characters in from the games and like enemies and stuff like that in further ones, so there's a fair bit of fan service in there, and they are kind of confusing to follow, um, but I would recommend at least the first one, because that is pretty creepy, and it's also got three animated movies, Resident Evil Degeneration, Resident Evil Damnation, so no. it looks like, <laughs> you can't really see it because it's blurry, it looks like over this second Resident Evil there's like an accent, but there isn't. And anyway, Resident Evil Vendetta. I've never seen the animated ones, I don't really care for them too much, I just wanted the collection on Blu-ray. It's a very nice box set. Um, and they're definitely sort of like guilty pleasure, not like masterpiece that you have to watch. Um, on the other hand, these movies are, I would say, almost masterpieces. I got the Rec or Record collection, which is, um, it's a Spanish, they're Spanish films about, where do I put this? I've seen the first one, that's like found footage, I haven't seen the others. Um, and I've seen Quarantine. And basically the premise is a news reporter and her camera guy and a bunch of civilians get quarantined inside this building because there's some sort of virus making people turn into like these manic zombie rage virus kind of beasties. And um, I think it ends up getting a bit religious. Um, but yeah, they remade it. Um, they made like a, a Western version called Quarantine, which was okay, but not great. If you're going to watch any of them, I would recommend watching Wreck. Um, but I think it's in Spanish and you have to read subtitles. So if that bothers you, then you could watch Quarantine, but yeah, like as I said, Quarantine's okay, but Wreck is supposed to be way better. Um, so yeah, pretty keen to watch those. Unfortunately, they didn't have a Blu-ray collection. I don't like getting a whole lot of DVDs these days, um, because I prefer just like level shelves, but whatever. I also got The Twilight Zone from 2017, hosted by Jordan Peele, who directs a lot of movies these days like Get Out, um, Us, the upcoming Candyman remake, and something else that I'm forgetting. Um, and I had no idea, I've always been super into Twilight Zone. The older one I wasn't really into because... Um, sort of the black and white thing, I'm not, not big on, like, black and white stuff, just because it's, um, some of the acting and camera work can get a bit campy, but they did a remake in, like, I want to say 2001, 2007 maybe, 
somewhere in the noughties anyway. And they had a lot of interesting stories in that one. And yeah, I didn't realise they'd remade like a 2017 version of it, so I'm pretty keen to watch these by the, by the back cover. It looks like there's some pretty big names involved. Like, um... What's his name? Ben? No, not Ben. Adam Scott. Kumu Mail Nanjiani. It looks like Seth Rogen. Yeah, it is Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen, Adam Scott. John Cho. I love him too. He's cool. So yeah, I'm hoping those are good. I've always been sort of interested in that sort of creepy Twilight Zone like mystery kind of stuff where it's not overtly horror where people are getting torn apart and that kind of thing but just like really creepy kind of thing so I've been working on actually like a short story collection where I sort of write um short stories <laughs> uh, sort of based in that style where like it's not gruesome necessarily it's not marketed as this will scare your pants off it's just like very unsettling like exploring themes of of uh, paranoia and like the feeling of being watched and the feeling of being completely alone um yeah that kind of thing so Twilight Zone's great next up I got um <laughs> a guilty pleasure movie Face Off a classic Travolta Cage mashup um this movie is such a meme, but I genuinely love it. It's about um, Nicolas Cage plays this criminal and John Travolta plays, I think it's FBI or police or something. And um, they want to stop this bomb going off, I think. So they capture Nicolas Cage and take his face off. And they put Nicolas Cage's face onto John Travolta and he has to pretend to be him. And there's this big confrontation at the end where, oh, like, I'm actually your father and I'm actually your husband. Um, I just have his face. Like, you gotta trust me. And it's great. And I highly recommend uh, watching Face Off. It's very entertaining. Next, I got a um, pretty controversial movie. I got um, Blair Witch 2016 in this lovely... Steel case cover. I am not a big fan of the original Blair Witch. Um, like, I, I understand it and it was big for the time and that kind of thing, but having not been around for the marketing and that kind of thing when it came out, you, you definitely lose a lot. And then not having nostalgia for it, there's a lot of horror missing from that. The remake, I think, is, well, sequel, I guess. Technically a sequel. It's very campy. Um, it doesn't do a whole lot of original stuff. But <clears throat> I just prefer it to the original, to be honest. Um, which, like, film critics would revoke my... <laughs> um, my card, my license, my review license. I don't know, I just, I, I kind of like it, and I like the game that came out the last year or two, um, I think that's pretty cool as well. So this has, um, cool special features as well, like a making of, which I'd be very interested to watch. I've had thoughts of making my own found footage a couple of times, because I'm very into sort of film stuff. Um, but that would go pretty poorly, I'd imagine. But yeah, it's a very nice addition. Very, very nice. Next up, I got um, a pretty classic horror anthology. It's Creepshow, which comes from George A. Romero and Stephen King. And it's a collection of, uh, I think it's like five sort of short horror flicks 
The Two Macabre Masters, writer Stephen King and director George A. Romero, conjure up five shocking yarns, each a virtuoso exercise in the ghouls and gags style of classic 50s horror comics. So, I'm expecting this to be pretty, um, pretty campy, but I think it's like a classic, um, horror anthology, and, uh, I'm very interested to see what King comes up with, since I do, like, while I do like his works, I think he can be a little pretentious sometimes. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how he goes working with a classic horror director in Romero. There's also, like, a series, I think, of Creepshow on Shudder at the moment, and maybe, like, a, a remake of the movie, but I think, I'm pretty sure that's the original one. Next is um, sort of an interesting choice. It's El Camino, which is a Breaking Bad movie, which is basically the sequel or the companion piece to the whole series of Breaking Bad. It stars um, Aaron Paul reprising his role as Jesse Pinkman and picks up directly where the series left off. It was a, a Netflix movie, I'm pretty sure. So I was pretty excited to see that it's actually available on Blu-ray, and not just Netflix. Um, but I think it's a very solid ending to an already solid series. Um, and the best part is like it doesn't, it doesn't ruin anything. Like they didn't have to come back and make more, and it's very dangerous to sort of come back and make more after the fact. Because if you change anything too serious, like kill particular characters, it's like, oh, we ruined like a perfect series. But they just wanted to like sort of come back, give a little bit more story, a little bit more guidance. Um, and I think it was fun. You can watch the entire series without the movie if you wanted to and make up your own ending. But I think it was fun. The only issue I did have with it was that like on the same side of that coin, they couldn't do anything big and exciting and grand because, um, you know, you have to play it safe. You don't want to ruin, retroactively ruin a perfect series for, like, all the fans. So you kind of very constrained as what you can do with those characters. But uh, I still like it. I think it's a great movie. Um, next, actually, speaking of Stephen King, I got a two-pack of Doctor Sleep and The Shining. I think Doctor Sleep is probably one of the best movies I watched last year. I've never actually seen The Shining, I've seen all the memes and like the references to it and everything else in that Simpsons episode, and um, like I understand the story, I've never just seen the movie. So <clears throat> I had enough knowledge of The Shining to enjoy Doctor Sleep, and I just really like Ewan McGregor as well. And. Um, Yeah, I thought it was great, so I got the two-pack, so I can watch The Shining next time I'm going to watch Doctor Sleep, I can watch that first. Yeah, I'd highly recommend Doctor Sleep if you haven't seen it. Um, next is <coughs> a pretty underrated couple of movies. I got a two-pack of Jeepers Creepers and Jeepers Creepers 2. I think Jeepers Creepers is actually probably one of my favourite horror movies. Um, I think it's severely underrated in that I don't really hear many people talking about it at all. Uh, the second one I watched and I did not like as much. Um, and then the third one was worse again, so I probably won't be buying that one on Blu-ray. But the first one's definitely great. The second one has its moments, but it can be pretty weird. There's a lot of racial stuff in there, which is very strange. Um, but basically, Jeepers Creepers is, uh, there's a being called the Creeper, and he requires um, specific body parts from specific victims to eat to replenish his own body parts. And the first one has Justin Long from, like, Die Hard and... Uh, some other movies that I've seen. 
and yeah, I just think the first one's really great. They're like on a road trip and it's just very gritty, very realistic. I, I really find, found myself saying like, what are you doing? You need to go do this. Like, why are you walking into danger? <coughs> but yeah, Jeepers Creepers 1, definitely worth a watch. And finally, the last movie I got for Christmas was um, Star Wars. I must complete my Star Wars sequel trilogy collection with the rise of Skywalker. I <clears throat> I have very mixed feelings about the sequel trilogy. I thought Force Awakens was great. Um, I did not really like The Last Jedi, which is not an unpopular opinion. And I think the rise of Skywalker could have been great. But my biggest issue with that trilogy is that Seven set up this arc, eight immediately threw that in the bin and didn't sort of work towards setting anything up. And basically just like came and it said, nope, to everything foreshadowed in like episode seven. Didn't set anything of its own up. And then, um, poor old, who was it, Ryan Johnson? I'm trying to think, Ryan Johnson was one of them. J.J. Abrams, yeah. So J.J. Abrams did seven and nine, and Ryan Johnson threw the whole business away in the middle with uh, eight. So I think J.J. Did, did the best he could. But, um, you know, once your storyline gets thrown out, you got to scramble for stuff. So what could he do but bring back a particular villains and characters? I do like, there are some really cool parts in this, like when uh, Kylo Ren, or Ben, Ben Solo, I guess, and Rey, like, fighting together. Some of the young scenes of Luke and Leia were cool. Um, the Emperor, Ian McDermott, is always, um, always a good time watching him as, as the Emperor. And then there's just some rando characters thrown in there, like um, <coughs> this sort of bounty hunter. Or whatever Han Solo is. Not Bounty Hunter. Like, Smuggler. Like, she's such a nothing character. And then Rose's part got basically removed as well. Which, she could have just died in Episode 8. I had no issue with her character in Episode 8. But she could have died at the end of that. And then that would have been a good arc for her. But then she's barely in this one. And basically her sacrifice was for, like, nothing in Episode 8. Anyway. This isn't a Star Wars rant video. Um, I like this one in like the grand scheme of things and I don't like having 7 and 8 and not 9 so I had to get this one as well. Um, I'm hoping that on a rewatch from start to finish it might be a more coherent story and if it's not then I will just live with that. More guilty pleasures. Okay, so... Um, that's all the small stuff, I guess. One other thing I did get was these lovely, comfortable, wireless, noise-cancelling Sony headphones. They are the... Um, I'm going to have to look it up. The Sony WH-1000XM4s. I wanted the XM3s, but because the 4s came out... Basically, all stock of the threes have dried up around my area, so I had to get the fours. Um, but they are very comfortable, and they're not too flashy, just like a nice matte black. Um, figure. Basically what I was looking for in my new pair of headphones was comfort because I wear these, I wear headphones for like eight hours straight sometimes. I had the V-Motor Wireless 2 or something and um, they hurt my ears very, very quickly, like maybe an hour to two hours and my head would start to be so I was constantly like readjusting because it like starts pressing my head up here but these are fantastic. Um, <laughs> the wireless works amazing. The noise reduction works amazing, like, 
If I put noise reduction on, I can't hear taps running. I can't hear like dishwasher or refrigerator hums. It's great. Um, and yeah, very comfortable. I've like slept in them one for two days straight, basically, and my head didn't hurt. So yeah, I think this is a very solid set of headphones. Um, they were sort of like a, a, a mixed Christmas anniversary birthday gift. And I'm very thankful for them because I no longer dread long editing sessions. So yeah, I'd highly recommend those if you're after a good pair of headphones. And the last cool thing I got this year was actually a surprise board game to add to my collection. This is Nyctophobia. Um, the game you play blind. <clears throat> Nyctophobia means fear of the dark. Welcome to the experiential tabletop game that is going to redefine what it means to play a game. Nyctophobia the Hunted is a cooperative game of survival where up to four players must work together to escape a maniacal predator chasing them in a pitch black forest. But there's a wrinkle. Would-be survivors play the game with blackout glasses. Players cannot see the board and have to rely on touch to navigate their way to safety. So are you afraid of the dark? Um, so I have seen nothing about this game. But it sounds awesome. So you've got like a little maze here by the looks of it that we have to sort of feel our way around. And uh, we haven't had like a game, a board game night for, an, for a long time. So it'll be interesting to bust that out and, uh, and see how that goes. But um, yeah, that wraps up my Christmas gifts from my friends and family and loved ones. I hope you all had uh, a lovely holiday period and um, definitely let me know what cool gifts you all got in the comments. I feel like I haven't talked to any of you in forever and I'm very much interested too. So yeah, please, please leave comments and um, let's get some, let's get some back and forth going again because it's, it's been a while and, uh, and I do miss like making these videos. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. Um, there is one other thing actually. This year I will be moving again. Um, you might notice I'm back in my original or my normal filming location at the moment, but that's only going to last for a couple of months. Um, hopefully video production doesn't disappear again sort of a quarter of the way through the year. Hopefully I've got some some pre-recorded stuff to work on by then or an alternative filming location sorted out um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it in the meantime thank you for joining me uh, it's good to see you all again i hope you're all well and i'll see you in the next video